Well, we got a customer complaint of a radio in op, and on the cluster we can see it says audio off. We've got us a pre scan here. We've got three codes in the radio controls, which is um, this part. We've got a limb bus fault code. Could be relevant, might not be. In the radio, we have a most bus code, U0028. And then in the HMI, we have another most bus code, a U0029. So, safe to say, we've got a most bus fault. Luckily, this one, everything is kind of all right here. Um, the wiring diagram shows us that we have a radio, an HMI, a media player, and then a cluster. So, what can we do? How can we figure this out? It's not really that hard. Let's go into the radio and just check to see if, if we have what's called a MOS bus break. So the radio is your MOS bus master and it's going to send out on a, a pair of wires a signal and it has to circulate through each module. In this one it will go from the radio to the CD player to the HMI, to the cluster, back to the radio. So it makes it makes a loop. It has to make a loop. This is a ring uh, bus. So if one wire gets broke, the ring is broke, but it has to make a complete circle. But so anyway, let's go into our read data. We're going to scroll down. We have most bus we've got four modules on here i think maybe five let me we'll do five I, i'll show you all of them these some of these are going to show nothing uh, because they're not actually there we want to see number of most communication breaks and then we want to see the upstream position okay hit okay so we have radio hmi cluster hmm no CD player most communication breaks too that's from me actually uh, unplugging stuff and plugging it back up and then the upstream position that is zero um, that is a pretty good indication most of the time sometimes this is wrong if this is zero that means the radio cannot talk to the first module in the loop if if it was two it means the radio could talk to the second one so this would be one and then two and three so right now it's saying it can't talk to the first one so the furthest it can talk is to itself well the next in line would be the media player. So just a quick little test we can do. I have, I, I made these a long time ago, just some jumper leads with some uh, micro 64 ends. Um, I don't really know where you're gonna find these at. I, I just got lucky and found them. Um, I could maybe find the part number for this through GM, maybe, I don't know. I don't know if you could get them, even if I gave you the part number. So we're going to unplug that, and I'm going to jump the most bus wires. So it's a, a twisted pair, kind of like a can line. So you've got two wires. You see the gray and then the white and green stripe, gray and white and green stripe. So basically, I'm just going to jump from gray to gray and then white and green to white and green. So let me kind of do that real fast. And you got you do have to keep your polarity correct. So 
So if if I'm right and this and this CD player is the cause of our most bus, we should get some kind of activity. We got static. There we go. How simple is that? So either this is bad or we're not getting power ground or the uh, that last wire there is a, a turn on wire so now we need to just verify all of that all right so i have a meter here with my two amp light bulb back probed in here with my leads um, i looked up and this circuit is a 20 amp fused circuit so i like to use about 10 percent of the the fuse rating just for load testing so that gives me two amps and if i pin this in here you see that lights and we got 14 volts i do have the car running so my power is good so now i need to know is this wake up signal good or not we have tested a little different it's a very low current signal um, i don't know exactly how much current it can put out but I know the radio would not be happy with me shoot, trying to pull two amps from it. So I'm going to use my 50 milliamp test slot. This is my favorite test slot. You get it through GM Special Tools. So I'm going to pin that in here, just like my other bulb. And if I remember right, this wake up signal is only on when you first crank it or turn the car on i don't think it stays on all the time so let's see let me try to get this in here okay so yep this one does stay on all the time so there we go we got a light we got 12 volts this is a wake up signal so that's it's not necessarily needs to be 14 this is low current so yeah we have power ground data lines can loop through and make the radio work so we've got a bad media player also just called a cd player this thing's bad that's pretty simple. I love doing most bus diagnostics because it's usually just something like this. You just loop in and out until you get things working. So thanks for watching everybody.